we are in the middle of unfolding catastrophe, unprecedented in scale and devastating in impact for all. We face a new and different kind of enemy in the most visceral way. COVID-19 is appending the totality of our way of life. And this virus threatens to exact the highest tolls on our people and our economies. We are forced to impose drastic measures to address this pandemic. We ask our people to distance from each other and stay home. We reduce social economic activities to the barest minimum. And we close our borders, creating barriers for mobility and trade. These immediate responses, while necessary, could drive our societies and larger international community further apart. And yet, an effective strategic response requires that we come together and cooperate even more. Retreating from the regional and global connections cannot be the answer. To effectively overcome the challenge of COVID-19 pandemic, ASEAN must collaborate and coordinate within a region and beyond. First, our health care systems are under increasing stress as the number of infections rise. We face a shortage of vital medicine and medical equipments and supplies. We need to boost production and facilities intra-ASEAN trade of these life-saving necessities. Second, we are particularly concerned with food security in this period of lockdowns. Our most urgent priority is ensuring sufficient supply of rice for our people. ASEAN must remain open for trade, crisis or no crisis, as no country can stand alone. Let us just therefore ensure that the supply chain connectivity and the smooth flow of goods within a reach. Food security is in the maintaining social, economic, and political stability, especially at the time of great difficulty of our people. We can ignore this, but only at our own risk. This measures address here and now issues that they are really important, but they are not enough. We have to look ahead, and this brings me to the third point. Without a vaccine or a cure, we can only delay the spread of the disease. But containment in whatever form and degree will have staggering socioeconomic implications for all of us. It is therefore imperative that we support vaccine and research and development initiatives. We should fast track cooperation with our dialogue partners in this area. For its part, the Philippines is ready to join solidarity with clinical trials for COVID-19 treatment. Fourth and finally, COVID-19 will not be the last pandemic the world will face. We have to be ready for the future outbreaks. We therefore have to improve and expand existing ASEAN mechanism to cover public health emergencies. 
Specifically, we should establish an early warning system for pandemics in the region. This is something vital and concrete that we can do in a collective manner. In this context, we welcome Thailand's proposal to establish a COVID-19 ASEAN Response Fund. Your Majesties, Excellencies, this emergency has triggered a crisis of solidarity in the other parts of the world. As we always have in time of great challenges, ASEAN stands in unity, mutual assistance and confidence in our collective unity. We thank Vietnam for its leadership in crafting and coordinating ASEAN's response from the early stages of the outbreak. We appreciate the generosity and support of our brothers and sisters in ASEAN, particularly Brunei, Jerusalem, and Singapore for the timely assistance. I take this opportunity to convey our deepest gratitude, the gratitude of the Filipino people. Our present challenge transcends borders and exempts no one, regardless of how we handle the crisis within our respective t territories we can only be truly safe if we defeat this virus everywhere. Let us therefore strengthen our networks in sol of solidarity and cooperation. Let us surmount this crisis together. Thank you. <laughs>